Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today at uh, GitHub Constellation India 2022. I'm joined here by someone who needs no introduction, a serial entrepreneur, a mentor, advisor, investor in startups, and an advisor to many organizations, Kunal. Hi, Kunal. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's great. We have you know, a lot of developers and students in the audience here today, Kunal, and I'm sure in this conversation, many of them will be inspired with what you have to share and also take back lots of learnings that they can apply in you know, their daily work. Uh, I'm super glad to be here. Uh, it's the group that I feel most uh, conscious speaking to because uh, uh, the one of the less known fact about me is that I started my career as a programmer who was terrible uh, uh, and, and I, I was uh, uh, working on front end, uh, particularly JavaScript, ASP uh, kind of stuff in 22 years ago. Uh, and I realized that I wasn't very good at it, but I was very good at finding and solving bugs. So that's interesting and uh, no pun intended, I'm part of the same club, Kunal. I, I tried my hand at C, Python, Java. I realized I'm no good at coding. I'm better at going and talking about it to others. So here I am doing you know, my what I call my favorite job in the world, which is working at GitHub. Awesome. So let, let me jump right into it. Um, you know, you talked about your career having started off as a developer and working on code. But I think your journey has been really phenomenal. Founding companies, solving problems, while we can say tech is solving problems as well, every developer is solving problem. There's this element of innovation and that you have also been doing. What's your thought on an innovator's mindset? I think uh, there are many ways to look at it. Uh, first of all, I think a lot of people confuse Jugaad as innovation, which is a problematic thing. Uh, uh, I think anything that, any Jugaad that scales as innovation, if it doesn't, it's just a jugard, right? And it's not going to get you there. Uh, and a lot of people think of that as innovation, which is not, right? Uh, I think innovation is finding a better path towards doing something that was otherwise not known or not practiced, but makes things dramatically more efficient, right? Uh, and And, every time you find an innovative solution, every other solution seems extremely inefficient, right? It should make everything before that feel inefficient in many ways. So to me, uh, the innovator's mind is this desperate need to find the shortest path between two points, right? And not the most reliable path, and therefore, innovators are likely to fail a lot because they may go in many directions and realize that, oh, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. And then they keep finding the shortest path. And they are very different than people who will reliably take you from point A to point B. May not be the shortest path, may not be the most efficient path, but they'll get you there. So I think the difference, uh, and I've seen uh, one particular Trait. So I, there's a beautiful framework I learned about from Devdutt Patnaik, which was a two by two, which talks about uh, one side is values, people who have high values, low values, and then there is obedience and low obedience, right, as a second thing. And if you do a two by two on that, you will find Ram as an archetype on high values and, and high obedience to rules. And Ravan is somebody with low obedience to rules and low values, right? And then there is Duryodhan, very high obedience to rules, but low values, like uh, is an interesting character. And then there is Krishna, which is very low obedience to rules, but very high uh, values, right? And I think to me, innovators are a little bit like Krishna's archetype, where they have very little respect to how things are done before. Uh, uh, they, they believe in the value of it and the path to it, and, and therefore, uh, 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 find interesting and short paths to achieving same goals or even achieve better goals. Oh, I just, I love that two by two matrix. I, you know, when you were talking about, I was trying to think, where do I fit in? Where do a lot of people <laughs> I know fit in? I won't talk about it on this call, but that was really, really fascinating. And I really like what you talked about, Jugard. It's funny, I was talking to an entrepreneur yesterday, Kunal, and 
he was also saying the same thing that you know my engineers always look at jugar trying to solve a quick problem but i always push back and say hey let's look at something that scales so it's a very deja vu what you just mentioned very interesting and in in your talk you just talked a lot about you know point a to point b trying to come up with a solution and i think my view is that's what an entrepreneur really does but at the same time right now we're talking a lot about startups but in our you know system and values entrepreneurship is not something that is you know taught so how do you really sow these seeds how did you think about becoming an entrepreneur and why um that's a, a hard question for the whole country we have been trained as a country to find safety security and settle down and the word settle down is a problematic word because many people have just settled down uh, and are not taking risk anymore in their life in their careers uh, and and the the volume of people that currently are existing in startup world is very very small right uh, but all the changes are been driven by the small group of people and why are more people joining because of the risk attached to working and being at a startup but uh, to me the the choice that i had was i was doing a job and i had a choice of buying a bigger house or getting a bigger car and that loop and i realized that uh, i'm going to be again getting stuck in uh, uh, emi chakkar and and i realized that emi was nothing but entrepreneur marne ka injection right or entrepreneurship <laughs> marne ka injection uh, because it was this method where you get stay in that loop and you don't come out so i realized that i should probably do something and build something and i think many people are born with entrepreneurial dna they just kill it over a period of time and and i'll tell you the traits of those people they are less likely to respect how things are done and they're questioning ye kyu kar rahe hain why is this this is a stupid idea all of that right they are mostly vocal second set of people are uh, who uh, have insane sense of sense of ownership right and i define ownership as a very interesting thing that imagine you are a product manager uh, and i can detect two types of product managers I, i call them the pet owners and the pet walkers right uh, and and there's a huge difference they may look like the same people but they are not uh, because if you ask a pet owner they will know all the nuances about the pet ke yaar this is the person they will bark at this is the person they will not bark at this is the food that they like this is the reaction they will have on this event all of that a pet walker on the other hand just kind of walks the pet right and i think that's the difference if you find people who have insanely high ownership in what they do they usually are very aware uh, even if there's a small domain of things that they are operating on and if you are one of those people entrepreneurship is for you because a job will never appreciate ownership uh, uh, as much as a startup will or being an entrepreneur will teach you i totally agree and i think my experience has been learning you know once you are a problem solver uh, you know a pet owner there's a lot of learning even training a dog to you know who you should bark at and not bark at who you should bite and not bite there's a lot of learning that you have to go through to teach the dog so i can totally relate to that uh, kunal let me switch gears a little bit and and talk about you know something that all of us have faced over the last two years which is this whole remote thing and a lot of the students who are listening to you right now would be joining careers going out and getting a job and they are need to be sort of faced with this new reality of hybrid so in your org and in your interaction with so many companies and startups how do you think students should prepare for this new normal i i have observed the younger team members who have joined during covid their learning curve has been much slower and sloppier compared to people who have been working from the office and i'll tell you why i feel that is happening a lot of our learning is done through method of osmosis just being around people who are smarter than us or know more than us and you see them in action even though you are not invited for the meeting you are overhearing conversations you are overhearing conversation at lunch table you are overhearing some random discussions here and there and i see a huge problem where younger people 
this is exactly like studying online right imagine a school kid is just learning online and hoping that they understand but there are so many things that you learn by playing with other people or uh, doing things projects with other people and and having understanding of leadership and uh, building uh, human relationships and bonds which makes it easy to do work in a group and i think uh, while it's super convenient it is making sure that people are not learning at a faster curve and i think if you believe that you are more ambitious than others and if you believe that you want to learn more than others then i would highly discourage you to be in a hybrid format and figure out a way to be around humans uh, 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 as they're going say, i mean as a, as a saying goes that uh, we 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 say that we are an average of five people we hang out with uh uh and and if you have just hung out with your family members for all these years uh you will become their average you have to go out there and increase the uh, uh dimensions of thinking on different things like families can teach you great things about values uh and and think but skills and competence which is not going to be something that you will find uh, uh how many of us are going to have people uh in our family who are great programmers great developers great product managers uh great business men uh, uh or or business women I, i we we just don't know we just have we, we are first generation for many of the things that we are doing right now in life and therefore it's better to kind of be around those people and absorb everything that they have to offer that's amazing i really like how you called a spade a spade um it's not only about hybrid it's about going out and engaging with people and i can share my experience i derive my energy from meeting people even bumping into folks at the airport hearing what they're doing i used to get inspired um looking forward to things opening up again and i'm sure all of us are as well and colleges are open so all of you would be going back and meeting you know uh, folks who joined college in the last one or two years uh, who just been doing online education for the last two years it's, it's it's a really interesting time so let me let me talk about this hybrid piece a little bit more kunal because it is a reality while we will go out and students will meet people developers will engage i think with tech also enabling people to be remote there is also this whole aspect of how do you build a culture and in yeah. the innovators mindset in the problem solving in the speed at which you are executing and right, the culture is an important piece so how do you deliberately think about building the culture in in cred and in the other organizations that you sort of advise um uh, i think culture is the hardest to transmit in remote environments and therefore i believe that every company which is working hybrid will have multiple subcultures that will develop right because a culture is nothing but constantly demonstrating what is okay and what is not okay consistently right uh, if it's inconsistent in a company on what is okay and what is not okay then that org is also demonstrating a culture that they are inconsistent that is their culture right uh i believe that uh, one can write these are our values these are our things but it's very hard to evoke certain things for example if company one of the company's traits and culture used to be about being helpful to other people is extremely hard to be helpful to people that you've not met and are remotely working on a project and only interacting through zoom or google meets and and uh, and you don't know them you don't know Uh, why are they asking these things you don't know the tone you don't read their tones right uh, for most people like for example if people know me only through texting which is many of my team members and they never saw me speak in person they will always think that i am a rude or mean person because i don't use emojis <laughs> right i am from a generation where emojis is not part of expression right and and to me text is something that i don't like so i just be curt on it so i think we are all building impressions about people and i think same is about culture uh, all the companies are not able to drive culture in a remote environment because 
how do you get some of these softer aspects going right this is not like imagine if i said there are so many times you should be like oh this is not cred like this is not cred this is not cred this is not cred we saw or we see happening and now how do you say these things and i don't even know your behavior outside your time spent on slack i don't know how do you behave how are we shaping people to become better human beings uh, which is what many of us got to learn from our workplaces right our workplaces made us better human beings in many many ways because we dealt with good cultures right but now we are mostly being what we are and the transformation that we have to go through is just not happening yeah um, that's really really interesting i think i'm thinking back to jugars where a lot of companies are coming up with jugars of hiring people right they they give you know a bike or something like that which will attract developers but i think what really makes people stay is the culture as you talked about you know i'm able to relate to what you know what cred stands for what you know the whole leadership team is walking the talk and that's what you know is the mission that i would like to be a part of totally relate to that i think an interesting question which i'm sure everybody would want an answer for is um how do organizations like cred look at hiring developers i know cred is a is a partner with github on the internship side as well so thank you for supporting students but purely from a hiring perspective what should you know all of these student developers look at developing when applying to cred uh i think we like people who love being builders and not being laborers of builders right like there is a mindset towards that i am a builder or the dog walker and the dog owner yeah pretty much pretty much and and which means that you have like i i i dislike the developers who are like ye product kuch to kar raha hai banana hai but aap bhi to product bana rahe ho right and i think the thing is that uh being insane amount of pride in work is hugely important right like uh, it's not about others rating your work 8 on 10 do you rate it 8 on 10 9 on 10 before you ship it right that's one the second one is uh, uh, people who believe in uh, compounding they believe that they have to become much better versions of themselves every year right uh, they treat themselves as an app that needs constant bug fixing and enhancement of features right or or introduction of new features for that matter right uh, those are the people that we really look up to uh, uh the the kind of people uh, that we don't like are the ones who are inert right they they are they don't feel something is going wrong something is being done badly they don't feel it here right uh, and and the ones uh, are who are optimizing for uh titles versus learning right there's an interesting phenomenon i have seen very is very specific to india i would say is that the joy of designations and titles versus what's my work how am i impacting things am i driving a huge amount of change yeah and am i you know becoming a manager in my leading teams that's more important than you know, solving an algorithmic problem which you know, will open up a lot more possibilities it's very interesting and i love what you said you know i'm an app i need bug fixes constantly i need to improve my features constantly and i'll always be scalable right the app needs to be scalable as well i i i just love that statement of yours kunal so let me tone things down a little bit make it a lot more non serious um what would you say is your favorite cred advertisement which one <laughs> which one uh, i i don't think uh, i can pick a favorite we've been very fortunate to work with really creative group of people who have come up with many good ones so i i wish i could pick one uh, uh but uh, uh i think the, the the good ones are still to come <laughs> so i keep hoping that my favorite is out there in the future versus in the past yeah i i like all of them they're always very quirky and very very fun you know talking about quirkiness um you are a prolific investor kunal you've been 
you know, supporting startups. What's the most quirkiest pitch that you've got from a startup? Uh, I think uh, quirkiest may not necessarily work as much as uh, wackiest. Uh, the ones where the people who know you vouch you, vouch for you the most, right? A lot of time people think that uh, it's the pitch that gets the funding or the pitch that gets people to invest. A lot of times, uh, I think about investing is somewhat like arranged marriage, right? Uh, you cannot really predict because you've not really spent time with somebody. So what you're looking for is markers hmm. of competence, markers of trust, markers of ability to think product and do product. And uh, while you can show a demo, you can't understand everything, right? Like, uh, uh, how do I understand something in, I don't know, baby care? How do I understand something in agriculture? Like, I don't understand. But what you can understand is people. What you can understand is the size of market that you're going after, right? And, and the moment you are able to demonstrate that in the most meaningful way possible, I think one of the downsides of shows like Shark Tank is that we have trivialized the, the need for references, the need for who are recommending you, the need for uh, uh, what's your journey been uh, versus a pitch. A pitch, uh, I would say, is only 20-25% of what you are doing. I have seen success in, in investing largely coming in early stages is on people uh, because you will see uh, a builder when you, uh, uh, you you will get to get see clarity of thinking. So my personal favorites are, uh, are people who are who know something more than I do about a subject. Uh, that's my filter. So I don't think the wackiest, quirkiest ones uh, you don't don't even get noticed. Uh, I, I like people who seem to have an understanding of something much more than I understand about that subject. Uh, that's interesting. I think the only comment I would have on uh, Shark Tank Kunal is the positive side is now everybody knows what entrepreneurship is. Going back to that question I asked you about sowing the seeds of entrepreneurship, uh, uh, it yes. might not be the perfect yes. example. But yes and no, the only know, problem I see, asking. the only problem I see is that everybody thinks startup is like raising money. You know, it's like yeah. uh, everybody who wants to run thinking that only when you have Nike shoes, you can run. That's the problem I see. Yeah, right. I think if you look around India, there is entrepreneurship already everywhere. The people, even somebody opening a shop you know, just to sell grocery is entrepreneurship. So totally agree with you. Uh, Last question on, on this one would be, you know, what has been your top three learnings as an entrepreneur in this whole journey? I'm sure you're also an app. I wish I could, I wish you could summarize it into top three, but if I have to still talk about a few that come top of mind would be, uh, it is, uh, uh, it is better to build new things than fixed old things. Uh, always true. Uh, uh, and, and therefore, uh, I, I wonder if you can fix some of the societal structures. Maybe it's going to be, it's going to be about building new ones, right? Uh, that's one. The second one is uh, uh, the joy for building uh, has to be way more than the joy of making money. Uh, if the joy of making money is way more than building, money will never come to you. Uh, three is uh, uh, not everybody thinks and cares about scaling. They don't want their products to be used by millions and millions of people. They're very happy if 10 people used it, they used it. Uh, and I think there's a distinction between those people who want their product, their, their idea, their vision to be across a lot of people. 
uh, and, and that's a very different DNA. Uh, and therefore, it also comes with the empathy of a large amount of people. I, I call it the crowd empathy versus uh, empathy of a small group. Uh, because you build a feature if it's not going to work for a large set of people, uh, you're mostly uh, very poor on empathy. Very interesting. Um, I think you talk a lot about innovation, you talk about entrepreneurship, values, culture, there's immense, immense learning in, in what Kunal talked about. Uh, my takeaway, personal takeaway Kunal is I'm an app. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to steal this idea of yours. I'm going to talk about myself being an app and bug fixes, especially when I do stupid things at home. I can always blame it on, you know, the app has a bug. Um, thank you for sharing all of this with students and developers out there, Kunal. I'm sure there are, you know, really, really good nuggets of learning that they've taken away. Is there anything else that you would like to share with these budding entrepreneurs and budding software developers getting into, you know, their careers? Um, all I would say is that uh, this is probably the best time uh, for the country, the best time to be involved in building uh, and, and uh, best time to become a better version of yourself. Uh, don't uh, uh, settle down is all I would say. Don't settle down. I think that's, that's the takeaway for all of you. Thank you, Kunal, for your time here today and speaking to all of us out here.